Hey, Iron Bakers, have you seen these before? It's a baguette tray. Previously, I've disregarded these as some sort of gimmick, rather arrogantly considering them the cheat's way to make a baguette, like, oh, no, 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 I don't need one of those. I'll do it the proper way. Thank you very much. But is it actually helpful? Let's find out, shall we? Roll that theme tune. So this probably isn't uh, quite a fair test. You might be thinking that Jack's missed the point here with this one, and you could be right, because at a glance, this is primarily used for two reasons. One is help with the shape and structure of your baguettes. And secondly, it's probably to remove the faff factor of stone baking. I never consider stone baking to be a faff because I do it all the time. It's just instinctual to me now. And also, I've made a fair few baguettes uh, in the past. I know how to do it but I'll do my best to put on my beginner's hat for you and weigh up the pros and cons of this towards the end of the video. Cut to the table. So yesterday, to cast a fair comparison, I used the straight white dough. I made four baguettes. No pre-ferment, no overnight rest, just a straight white dough needed, rested, shaped, rested, baked, because you can do nice baguettes that way, by the way. Two of my baguettes were rested on a couche cloth where they will puff up ready for stone baking in the normal way I would go about things. And the other two, straight onto the baguette tray where they will puff and bake. I did wonder if over time they would adhere to our baguette tray, but it is full of holes here. The thing is breathable, much like our couche cloth is, encouraging that natural skin to form on the outside of our dough and therefore not sticking. After they puffed up to a point I was happy with, I removed the first two from the couche onto my baguette peels as normal. And then I scored all four in exactly the same way. In the oven, I have my stone nice and hot. I was conscious of placing the baguette tray directly onto the stone because I thought probably most people won't be doing that. So I raised up the tray by using another smaller upturned tray underneath just to create a gap between the tray and the heat of the stone. I steamed up the oven and baked them all as normal and this is what we ended up with baguettes personally for me there are a few things on my mind here relating to the process and the practicality and we'll get onto that later on but now while we're here let's take a look at the end product the bread itself as you can see they are ever so slightly different both look nice and are crispy and crusty by all means a great success I can't help but like the shape of the stone baked baguette better. It's more natural to me. It's more satisfying. It's an achievement. It's a testament to my personal efforts, rewarded, unassisted. And we'll get onto more about that later. The stone baked baguette has a sturdy base, whereas the other one is round and rolls around in a kind of suspicious way that I don't quite trust. I wonder if I made a sandwich with this, it might cause us a problem. As I suspected, the burst on top of the stone baked baguette is fuller for two reasons. Firstly, from the immediate heat of the dough touching the stone, offering maximum oven spring, a large increase in volume busting up that top. And secondly, from baking unassisted with unsupported edges, allowing the baguette to kind of flow out sideways a little bit in the natural way that it does, increasing the contact with that stone and allowing the top to open up instead of going up and out. If that makes sense. That restricted movement is exactly why the crumb in the assisted baguette is ever so slightly tighter than the stone baked one, which is so hard to see. It's very, very slight, but I can feel it. Knowing what I know, if I was to do it again, I would let the baguettes in the tray prove up even bigger because I would know they're not gonna get as much oven spring as I'm expecting with a stone baked baguette. And so let's puff it up a little bit further before we bake it. That would make for a lighter baguette. So the question is, would this help a beginner? Yes, I think it would do. If you are struggling keeping a nice shape on your baguette, this would help you out. It would make them long and straight and rounded if that's what you wanted. And secondly, it kind of removes the fat factor of stone baking. If you see the act of stone baking as a barrier between you and making amazing baguettes at home, this kind of removes the need to do that. And you can focus on the baguette itself and the dough without worrying too much about that stone baking factor. From a practicality point of view, when you're stone baking, you need to get a stone and you need to get a pill. You can use one like this, which is universal. Both the stone and the pill can be used for multiple things like baguettes, ciabattas, pizza, sourdough, all kinds of things. You don't have to exclusively have 
But I get pills like me, I just like to have different pills with different things. It just feels like the right thing to do. It's easier to load them in one by one, but you don't have to. You can have a multi-purpose stone and a multi-purpose pill. This is good for pretty much just one thing, perhaps baguettes, maybe uh, sub rolls too. And if your pressure's about cupboard space, drawer space, if you've got these just for that one task or possibly two, um, I don't know if that's a good thing, it's probably not. There are many different trays just like this one and prices all over the place ranging from £2.50 to £12.50. I got this one from the supermarket for £8.50, but realistically, you're probably gonna wanna need two because nobody bakes two baguettes and that's it, do they? I would always bake at least four to make my efforts worthwhile. And now let's talk about the process of actually making the baguettes because certainly for me, and you're probably expecting this already, this is where it falls short. Both of these baguettes are a great success and I'd be delighted as I'm sure you would be for making either. But of course, there is something missing here. There has to be in pursuit of making things easy and more convenient. Something is always lost along the way. That's just the rules of life. Part of the experience is taken from you. I'm talking about the satisfaction of making something with your own two hands, that feeling of I did this that we touched upon earlier. That practice makes perfect process. The somewhat ceremonial preparation of baguettes for baking, removing from your couche to your peel, sliding your dough onto the stone, the whole thing is pleasing. This is, after all, why we make our own bread in the first place, isn't it? Because the process is pleasing. Whatever you consider a true baguette to be in terms of its final characteristics, the process is always a craft. And what I mean by that is practice and persistence performed with love for great reward. This? This takes that craft away. So hey, if you are wanting to make baguettes nice and straight and weirdly round on the bottom with ease, then this is for you. But if like me, you're in this for the long term, for the massive value present through practice, for the love and the life of the craft, then this will take that from you. Personally, you all saw it coming. I don't see the point, but I am massively biased. Of course I am. Would it help a beginner? Yes, it would, of course. Is it worth the trade-off though? Perhaps in the short term. If you could bust out the kind of results that you're expecting in this, getting that fire burning inside of you for more, that feeling is always worth it. I reckon though, once you start and you start getting those results, you're gonna wanna move on quite quickly and start working on the true craft of a baguette. I hope you've got some value here today and I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you have one of these? Have you tried them? What do you like about it and what don't you like about it? Let me know in the comments box underneath. Thank you to every single one of my patrons for signing up recently and making all of this happen and thank you all for simply being here. See you next time. Bye-bye.